channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make a lamb dinner. We are very fortunate we get some good quality lamb from a local supplier at a <laughs> hefty price, but worthwhile. It is so tasty. And we buy them already in freezer packs like this, and then I'll defrost it the morning that I know I'm going to be making a lamb dinner. and pepper will be delicious on this, but if you've got this Costco spice, it is so delicious. I say Costco because that's where we buy it, or someone buys it for me when they go, but <laughs> but this is actually just Clubhouse Montreal chicken spice, which you can buy, I think, anywhere. Uh, it is very tasty. We love it, but we don't love it too much because, well, it is filled with sugar, so. That's probably why it tastes so good, but anyway, if I've got this on hand, I'll add this on here because it does make a nice flavor on the lamb. I also like to add any kind of vegetables I have into this pan if I have room like there's lots of room around the meat before I put on the lid so I easy things like mushrooms or maybe broccoli that can cook in the oven with this meat now you'll notice I'm not adding any extra liquid you can probably add a little bit of ketchup or tomato sauce to this if you want to but this flavor from this meat actually is so delicious by itself that it doesn't require any help to make a sauce and this fat will cook off and become sort of a delicious sauce in itself, uh, which you can choose to eat or not, depending on if you're eating that kind of rich food or not. But I'm not gonna add any sauce to this, I'm just gonna add in a few extra vegetables where there is room. Okay, it looks like I only have room for those mushrooms, so I'm gonna put the broccoli away. But that'll be good enough to cook in the oven. And then this specific way of cooking it goes so quickly because once it is defrosted, I just add it straight to a pot with the lid on and put it in the oven for an hour. I think that is the treasure of good meat is that you really don't have to do much to it at all. Usually a little bit of salt and pepper and the way that you're cooking it just 
brings out the flavor of the meat, helps it to not be dry or tangy, but just tastes really good. And this is one of those meats. And so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I cook our lamb meat. Now this is mostly kind of steaks or ribs, anything like that, not a lamb roast. I would do a lamb roast in a similar way. I would just do it for much longer and probably add some extra spices if I'm gonna go ahead and make that kind of specialty roast. But just for these steaks and any kind of easy ribs, small pieces, just throw them in a pot, put them in the oven for an hour. Now, additions to this, I'm also, while the oven is running, going to be making some pumpkin to go as a side, and then I'll be making some mashed potatoes with some of the potatoes that we have here, just as a nice aside to this dinner meal. So let's cook dinner together. Now the pumpkin, I'm just gonna slice in half, take out all of the seeds, and add it into the oven on a pan with some parchment paper to cook with my meat while that's going. Now you don't have to do anything else. This is good enough and just put it upside down like this in the oven on this sheet pan, cook it for an hour um, and it will be just fine. Normally I will cook it at 350 degrees because I'm doing the lamb at 400 degrees Fahrenheit at the beginning there. I'll probably just take these out a little earlier and you will be able to spot at the top. The skin will get nice and caramelized and well, slowly start to burn. So then take it out before it gets to that point. Um, but these will cook with the lamb, very easy. Now I'm starting my cooking time off at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and I'll cook it at this temperature for about 30 minutes and then I'll turn my oven down for the last 30 minutes to cook around 300 degrees Fahrenheit nice and slow for another half an hour. And this is usually how I cook dinner. Once I have my staple meat, I'll think about a quick vegetable and a starch to accompany that. And if I have some extra time, I'll get creative with a salad or whatever kind of specialty dish that I can make with potatoes, like scalloped potatoes or fancy vegetables. I don't have time for that right now. This is my quick <laughs> dinner meal tonight. All right, and then last but not least, the potatoes. wash these if you feel like they need to be washed. Um, we don't mind our mashed potatoes with their skins on, so I'm just gonna <laughs> go ahead and dice these. Now it's basically a guessing game to get enough for dinner and then enough for a lunch the next day. So sometimes I have leftovers, sometimes I don't. This is my guess today. These are russet potatoes and they have a bit of a harder skin. If you're looking for a potato with less of a hard skin, you can buy red potatoes or yellow potatoes. They're just a bit more soft on the skin and if you're gonna leave the skins on for mash, they would be better. We're just used to eating <laughs> all kinds of ragged food. And there is actually a lot of nutrients in the potato skin. As actually with a lot of skins on vegetables and fruit, even potatoes. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave these on. Not the end of the world. But if you're looking for specifically good mashed potato potato, yellow potatoes are a better choice. 
than these hard-skinned rusted potatoes. And if you're going to grow potatoes, grow a bunch of yellow potatoes for that purpose also, instead of just the Yukon Gold. Is it Yukon Gold or Russet? Let me check. It says... You know what it doesn't say? It just says uh, a number two potato in Canada. I wonder if that's size. We try to buy real food. What I want to say is organic food, but you really got to watch when you use that word because it means so many different things. But we try to buy real food, and so I usually just check what is the least expensive at the time and buy that. So that is why we are having this, and I don't know what to tell you. It's probably not Yukon Gold. I think it's Russet. And if I find out I was wrong, I will put a name here below of what it actually is. All right, these are ready to go into the pot, into water, and cook. my mashed potatoes I usually get a pot of water boiling on the stove and then I will chop up my onions into small cubes while that is getting ready once the water is boiling I'll add my diced potatoes and that just cooks really quickly for me uh, you can put a wooden spoon ladle right on the top and that way it won't boil over but usually these potatoes are ready in about 15 to 20 minutes depending on how small you diced your potatoes I test when it is finished by inserting a fork and just seeing how soft that potato is. Now you want it to be soft, so you have the ability to put the fork through, but not totally mushy, and so kind of keep an eye on it in those last five minutes so you can get the sweet spot. And then once it is ready, I will strain the water, add some milk and butter, and mash it with our masher. And there we go, the mash is done. Now you can find me cooking some dinner meals on here often, and so if you like that, please subscribe to this channel and stick around if you found this interesting. I know I'm always in need of some new dinner ideas or just some quick demos on how to make, let's say, pumpkin in the oven quickly. So stick around if this is helpful to you, and don't forget to like this video if you have found it helpful.
Well, thank you for cooking dinner with me, and I hope that you found this helpful. And if you have, please don't forget to like this video. It'll really help our channel. And if you like content like this, please subscribe and stick around. We'd love to have you catch some of the upcoming content. Okay, I'll see you. Bye.